Welcome back to Piers Morgan Uncensored. I'm delighted to be joined by an actress whose new book is a no-holds-barred insight into her stellar showbiz career. It's called Behind the Shoulder Pads, Tales I Tell My Friends. And as one of those friends, I've heard a lot of these tales. Dame Joan Collins, <laughs> great to see you. Well, great to see you too, Piers. How are you? It's wonderful. I'm pretty exhausted. I've been on the tour with my show, Behind the Shoulder Pads, again. Mm. And uh, this is my one day off. And, and you come in you, to do this? Only for you, Piers, would Thank I come you, in. Thank you, yeah. Are you wearing shoulder pads tonight? A little bit. Of and what, pads lur what lurks behind them? What lurks behind All kinds of secrets <laughs> that I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> just have to read my book. You let me, I just want to start on a slightly uh, serious note, but we can't ignore this extraordinarily sad, horrible story that's come out of Israel. What, what do you make of this? Well, it's barbaric. Mm. I mean, it's um, one of the... I can't think of anything that has upset me more mm. other than 9-11. Mm. Um, and I don't really want to talk about it too much because I get upset. Mm. So if you want me to be crying during your show, mm. go ahead. No, I tell you, I, <laughs> I myself, I choked up earlier reading this new revelation about 40 babies being killed. Oh, my God. And some of them don't. being beheaded. And I was like, how, how can any human being do that to a baby? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's totally barbaric. It's not, a, it's not the sort of thing a human being does. No. It's an animal. And I, 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 I just... Um, I've been very upset mm. ever since this happened. I've mm. been watching all the news. I've been reading all the reports. And all I can say is that I and, you know, everybody else, I'm sure, is just shocked and horrified and... I mean, do you remember 9-11? Yeah. Do you remember how... I mean, we heard all those stories all the time, and you remember mm. where you were. Mm. I mean, I remember exactly where where we were. And I think that, you know, we'll remember this, like you remember... Well, you remember when... images. I mean, I remember at 9-11, the haunting images of people jumping out of the towers. Oh, my God. And when we realised what it was, yes. just how everybody felt. Yes. And this time, that poor young girl who's being kidnapped from the music festival, and you know that later you see her body, and then the poor... the grandmother who survived the Holocaust and oh. she's being taken away and she's just stand, sitting proudly and defiantly as they take her away to what? I mean, probably some horrific murder. And you think, this woman survived the Holocaust. Yeah. It's just, it, to me, it's beyond depravity. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's barbarism. It's, uh, it's completely vile and hateful. Mm. And I, I can't think that... Anybody can possibly condone it no. in any way, shape, or form. You can't if you have an ounce of no. humanity. Yeah. The, the Holly Willoughby story that's broken tonight. Oh, Joe. Holly. Yes. We, we know Holly really well. Very She's well. She's great yes. fun. She's a great presenter. I know. She's, She's been through a, a rough old year anyway with the yes. Philip Schofield scandal. But this is, a, I mean, again, a shocking story that somebody has now been charged with plotting to kidnap and, and murder. And murder her and her children. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think this whole thing comes down to too much social media. Mm. Too many people put... I mean, she's there in your living room every morning for yeah. two and a half hours. Yeah. She's pretty, she's funny, she's cute. Um, she, she's not too controversial, mm. but I'm sure that occasionally she says something that is. And um, somebody gets attached to her, mm. somebody thinks she's you know, that he can go after her. It's happened to lots of people mm. in the public. It happened to me in a little way. Did it? You know, um, yes, I got this, kept on getting these letters from this man who was in Sing Sing, mm. and he said that he wanted to marry me. Really? <laughs> and he sent me pictures of himself saying, I'm in for a murder I didn't commit. Well, oh they always God. say that, don't they? And there was a picture of him naked lying on his uh, bunk. And he was a murderer? Well, that's what he said, but he didn't oh. do it. But this was many years ago mm. when I was a pin-up girl, darling. I was a pin-up girl once. I'm I... very a pin-up yeah. girl now, for <laughs> some of us. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, but when you look at your career, has it changed, do you think, the nature of that kind of attention on particularly female stars, or was it always a bit of a problem? No, oh, no, it has changed. It's much, much more. Before, we had to watch out for the producers and the directors mm. and some of the leading men and the CEOs and the heads of the companies and the, you know, the guys who run the studio. Mm. Now you have to watch out for people on social media mm. that are going to try and 
get you and attack you and say horrible things about you because whatever you we're still human beings yeah. we don't like people to say nothing but also things about what's us. happened is on social media you know i like to express opinions right oh, when you, you do were, uh, by the way so do you when we had dinner <laughs> together but but i know but you're careful on social media and i know why we talked about this because the reaction can be horrible right yes it can. and many people feel cowed now into not wanting to express opinions i found that so sad well cowed is not rather a nasty word. Mm. I think um, smart enough not to put right. yourself in the broiling pit of hatred and venom, mm. which is what a lot of it is. Right. I mean, let's face it. I don't go on TikTok, although people are saying I've got to go on TikTok. TikTok is big. Is I know it's big. <laughs> yeah, that's the you know, it's the number one news smoke. source for kids under 21. Well, in the world. I'm not a kid under 21. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you look like you're not far off. Oh, yeah, sure. People always say to me, when, they, when we post pictures of, of our little uh, gallivanting around the world, oh. they always say the same thing. How does Joan Collins look so young? Uh -huh. And what is the answer? Um, lucky, good genes, handsome parents, mm. lots of face cream, keep out of the sun, and read my book. <laughs> <laughs> or my books. Yeah, or your book. I've yeah. read your books. Yeah. Yeah. And I've read the yours. next one coming out? I'm working on it. Oh, of course you are. I'm working on it now. Yeah. There's a lot that needs to be said. Yeah. Well, this is my 19th book behind the show. Is it really? Yeah. And it's coming out in America on mm. the 24th of this month. And, and I've been touring with the play. Not the play. Mm. I mean, Percy and I have been kidding each other on the stage. We get, Are you coming to see us? On yeah, I want to come and see Oh, it. good. Good. But the, thing, the other thing about you, other than your obvious uh, glamour, yeah. is the work ethic is what I've always loved about you. You mm. have an incredible work ethic. Where does that come from? Parents. Uh, I was very lucky. I had, a, you know, the perfect kind of nuclear family parents. I mm. had a tough um, father who was um, quite strong and, uh, uh, you know, very strong and loving mm. and sweet mother who didn't want to do anything but look after her children and make sure that they were safe mm. and that they were taken care of and she gave mm. us the right food. And um, but my father had this. We got a picture of, of him actually on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah. I think Percy looks a little bit like himself. <laughs> <laughs> Freudian, Freudian. Well, we've got a picture yeah. of Percy to tell. Look at Percy. Yeah. He's a handsome man, Percy. Yeah, he is. He's actually he's my age, isn't he? I don't know. I never yeah. talk about Yeah, him. we're about the same age, yeah. me and Percy. Good for you. I think he's aging better than me. <laughs> no, but I want to tell you, I want to tell you my, my father's credo. Yeah. He said, nobody will ever do anything for you. You have to do everything for yourself. And do you believe that? Oh, I know it's true. Yeah. I mean, even now you ask your agent to do something. Well, not your agent, but you ask somebody to do something. And it's always best if you do it yourself, yeah. I think. And, um, you know, you go shopping and... Anyway, I... No, I Listen, I know that's your mantra. I see it in you every day. It's incredibly Well, my impressive. other mantra is eat life or life will eat you. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> love that. Let's hold that thought. Come back after the break. I want to talk about if you could be trapped on a desert island for the rest of your life with any of your leading men, which one would it be? There's a cliffhanger for you. Do you know what? That's exactly how you look at me sometimes when we're having dinner, <laughs> if I cross the line. Um, I loved that show. And you know I what I loved? Too. I it loved it. Fun, glamorous, bitchy, all of it. It's Last night, I turned on British TV. On one, ITV had a Yorkshire Ripper drama. BBC uh, had a Jimmy Savile drama. I was like, for God's sake, just give me something. I know, there's Escapist. Nothing, I know, there's nothing glamorous anymore. No. It's like it's a dirty word. Yeah. You know, I mean, I was going to wear something more glamorous than that, but with a bit of glitter. Mm. But then Keir Starmer <laughs> got it for me. <laughs> what do you, what, on politics, I know you're traditionally a conservative. What's, what's going to happen this election, do you think? I have no idea. Could you, could mean, you imagine I... voting for Keir Starmer? No. no I <laughs> what can't. about Rishi? Well, of course. I mean, yeah. I, but he's not my MP. No. You know, so, I mean, who but knows? Do you think he deserves a crack at being Prime Minister a bit longer or not? We've had so many Prime Ministers in this government. I know. I'd like to see Boris back. Oh, for God's sake, Joan. <laughs> We've had this conversation. You can't be serious. All right, well, don't ask me then. <laughs> <laughs> um... King Charles, you've known him a long time. How do you think he's doing? I think he's doing fine, yeah. He seems to be very low-key. You don't mm. read a lot about him. Mm. I mean, you read a lot about um, uh, Kate and William, mm. or Catherine and William, mm. and um, you read a lot about the, the little boy, George. Mm. 
But you, there doesn't seem to be very much about the, mm. the king in the newspapers or on TV. Do I you think, think he's doing a good, solid job, from what I can see. Yes. Hard to be exciting when you, you inherit it after 70 years of waiting, right? Well, of course. I mean, I miss our Queen Elizabeth yeah. so much. Yeah. I mean, we were so upset when she dies, even though we knew that it was mm. probably going to happen. And I was, I remember we were playing with our then seven-month-old baby granddaughter, mm. so, sort of took our minds off it. Mm. She was just learning to crawl. And um, I thought the Queen was one of the most fantastic, I inspirational mm. women ever, mm. ever. I totally I, agree. I, 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 I miss so her a lot. Times, yeah. And each time, I talk about it in my, in my book a lot, mm. how I met her. And w once she had a glass, mm. it went, and I, was, I wanted to ask her, is that gin? Or water, but I didn't care. <laughs> she was great. I, I once asked her about, um, uh, I think it was at Windsor or Buckingham Palace, one of them, but looking out of the gardens. And I said, Your Majesty, do you like the, the garden parties you have to put on? And she said, Well, Mr. Morgan, let me put it to you like this. How would you like having 12,000 complete strangers trampling on your lawn? Oh, yes, you, <laughs> you tell me that story. I loved it. Um, <laughs> now, I want to show you, these are five men that you mentioned in your book. Um, Marlon Brando, Elvis, it's the best name dropping I've ever read this, but even better than mine. Marlon Brando, Elvis Presley, Paul Newman, Richard Burton, Gene Kelly. If you could be trapped forever on a desert island with one of them, who would it be? Oh, well, it would definitely be Paul Newman. Really? Because he would be making the most fabulous salad dressing and putting it on all the leaves of all the different trees. You would be trapped on a desert island and only want to have him make you salad dressing? Well, there would be other things. <laughs> he was very... Paul was very amusing. He had a great sense of humour and he was really... A word that I don't really like, nice. Yeah. He was a just... And he fought for me to be in that movie with him because the studio wanted Jane Mansfield and he said, Jane Mansfield, you know, I don't want her. We want Joan because mm. Joan is a good comedian. And he was very loyal. And the last time I saw him was about oh, a week before he died. He was looking a little bit, you know, not so mm. well. And I said, how are you, PJ? And he said, Still got a pulse, <laughs> which I thought was really Which, in the end, great. that's all we can hope for, isn't yes, it? I mean, still got it. a pulse. Um, I'll tell you who also, uh, also has a pulse. I love this quote. This is from Percy at your wedding. This was from his speech. Joan is my accomplice, my comrade, my confessor, my confidant, my fearless leader and most loyal supporter, my very best friend. I believe herein we have the arsenal to battle whatever life has to throw at us. It's my fervent wish and my pledge tonight that I can every day, in some little way, make your life as rich and wondrous as you make mine. He is a charmer, person. He's the best. He is. Yeah, he really is. Of course, a... we have our rows of now course. again, but he is so wonderful. He's a great man. Yeah. You're a great lady. It's been great to see you. Oh, it's great to uh, see you, Your book is called Behind the Shoulder Pads. The tour, eight more dates, I think, from yeah. Brighton to New Brighton, yeah. London. Go see it. It's a great show. Great to see you, Dame uh... Joan. Uncensored as ever and looking impossibly <laughs> glamorous.